Hello, and welcome to the history of Star Wars. Today's episode, we're gonna be covering the YT-1300 light freighter, and here we go. The YT-1300 light freighter was one of the most successful of the Carillion Engineering Corporation freighter designs. The most notable example of this model was the Millennium Falcon, a heavily and illegally modified YT-1300. Conceived by a panel of CEC shipbuilding experts, with help from Nero Sinir, the YT series went on to become one of the most popular transport hulls ever produced, revolutionizing the interstellar shipping industry with its unparalleled application of modular design, whose sections could be mass-produced and arranged into new configurations as needed without extensive retooling. This saved CEC enormous amounts of credits, allowing the starships to be brought to market at extremely competitive prices. Brand new, a YT-1300 would cost you 100,000 credits, and a used one would run you about 25,000. The YT-1300 model exemplified this concept with a circular main corridor and modular compartments that could be mounted around it all radiating outwards towards the central core inside a saucer-shaped hull, making for both a convenient and economic design. The appeal of the YT-1300 transport was not its basic equipment, but its ability to take an extraordinary amount of modifications and altercations. In short, the YT-1300 was reliable, durable, and easy to modify, hence the popularity amongst most freighter captains throughout the galaxy. Like the rest of the YT series, it featured a saucer-shaped hull with an external cockpit. The YT-1300 came in three different configurations, a port-mounted cockpit, a starboard-mounted cockpit, and a centrally-mounted cockpit, the last of which became the standard in the YT-1930 design. The YT-1300 used fuel cells powered by liquid metal fuel. Almost every YT-1300 that was sold was later customized with a handful of components, from simple underfloor storage space to a new hyperdrive and added firepower. The features the YT-1300 was given on the production line were necessary but basic. The off-center cockpit, two escape pods located in the starboard side of the freighter, a laser counted mounted atop the craft, and about 100 tons of cargo space. Hundreds of thousands of YT-1300s were still in service as of 40 ABY. While all YT-1300s looked similar from the outside, the interior of the ship could be configured in a number of ways thanks to the modular design. Two of the most popular designs which saw the greatest level of production were the Freight YT-1300F and the Passenger YT-1300P configurations. It was not uncommon to find ships with a mixture of both passenger and cargo configurations belonging to the more entrepreneurial captains. And later in the life cycle of the 1300 product line, the CEC execs grew wise to this fact, realizing that many customers were looking for a balance between cargo and passengers. Corellian Engineering began to deliver ships with a blend of both freight and passenger modules. This configuration, initially called the YT-1300FP, quickly became the most popular arrangement, over time coming to be recognized as the stock version of the ship. The separate designs for freight and passenger configurations disappeared from common usage soon after Emperor Palpatine's rise to power. The YT-1300P, the passenger configuration made full use of the saucer-shaped hold to fit as much living space as possible, sacrificing room that would be typically reserved for cargo or machinery in favor of multiple passenger cabin modules. Each passenger cabin had three bunks, a compact refresher and storage compartment. An official CEC conversion kit could convert two of the bunks into bunk beds, increasing passenger capacity to five beings per cabin. Greater pod capacity was also a requirement requirement, and two Class 6 escape pods were built into the sides of the YT-1300P to accommodate the larger passenger complement. This supplemented the five Class 1 escape pods located in the engineering bay. As a result, truncated boarding ladders replaced the ramps used for standard access and egress. The YT-1300F 
The freight configuration left the interior of the ship as an empty shell, leaving the crew with minimal comforts as more room was given to the cargo holds. Of significant note, there were twin boarding ramps, port and starboard, for access to the treaded cargo, loaders, and droids. These ramps and the overhead clearance they required took up much of the space that housed the escape pods in the YT-1300P. Matching port and starboard docking rings were instead placed in the protrusions on either side of the external hull. Again showing the versatility of the CEC designers in that this interior change barely altered the outward appearance of the YT-1300. This frequently led to misidentification by casual starship watchers. Many a debate has ranged over whether it was docking rings or life pods that were located behind the central protrusions on the ship's hull. Thanks to the highly customizable nature of the YT-1300, either option or a combination of the two was possible. Many individuals also modified the exterior of the YT-1300, often modifying and expanding the forward mandibles for extra crew and cargo space. It was highly unlikely to find two ships that had the exact same layout and systems. The ship could also be fitted with optional external cargo pods. Mounted to the outside of the dorsal hull of the ship, around the center saucer section, the pods could add up to an additional 100 metric tons of cargo space. This configuration was popular with the Alliance support services. Such modified freighters were used to resupply rebels and starships located behind enemy lines. Hey, thank you for watching the history of Star Wars. Special thanks to Wikipedia and its contributors for all information you heard today. Very special thanks to my Patreon and to Royalty Free Tube for this fantastic background. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, hit that bell, do whatever. These things really help the channel grow. Thank you and have a great day. Bye-bye.